journey a little bit and my labor and delivery experience so don't forget to comment down below tell me if you like that video here send that video to our friends or share the video if you know somebody that's having a baby soon or somebody that's pregnant that wants a little bit you know experience or send them that video here like this video and click the button down below and subscribe right let's get into this video the things that you say, but they make you feel alright And I catch a vibe any time that I look in your face Tell me why you look so fine, baby girl, I see you So, how I found out I was pregnant, first thing Alright, first things first, you know Most people that miss them period first, right? Then they say, oh shit, that never happened to me So for me, I was very sick was sick, 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 sick for a very long time. Nauseous. The center, everything bother me. Diarrhea for a long, 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 long while. Just sick. Sick to my stomach. Cramps in my belly. Flu-like symptoms. Chills. Sick. So, initially, I thought I had, um, when I saw the name again. Gastroenteritis, yes. Lycomis gastroenteritis. At first, I thought I had gastroenteritis. So did I buy up the charcoal pill? The, we call them something. Anything I have to do with belly ache, I buy them. Drink them, think it's going to work, take the charcoal pill, and they just now feel better. Every day, so for about two weeks, three or three weeks, I'm just sick. So, all right. Pregnancy test was the, wasn't the first thing to come to my mind. Uh, one, I have endometriosis. So, to me, I had to breathe. Then doctors would have told me before that, oh, you probably won't be able to get pregnant, da, 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 or you have to do a tight diet test and oh. so pregnancy was just the last thing on my mind. And then me is a man after a girl guy. If somebody, you know, never to a man after. So hello. What's happening here? So, anyways, as I said, sick for a while and think I didn't have gastroenteritis. Until I realized that all right, boom, may I get better? No, not going for me. So I took a pregnancy test. When I took the first pregnancy test, it was negative, right? Blood of Jesus. Negative. Understand? So I girl can't think about what I mean. I said, all right, probably a flu with little something. Me don't know. Me eat something bad when belly kill me. Still take some more charcoal pill when normally work for me. None of that works. All right. I decided that I'm not going to take an experiment says I go to the doctor. Okay, so this was a month and in. This is my doctor. Cool. So I went to the doctor and she asked me if I'm seeing my period. And I'm like, I think so. I think I did. I did see my period. And she said, well, you know, I'm not afraid for whatever. So I tell her my symptoms and whatever. And she said, well, we can do an ultrasound if you feel like, you know, pregnant. So I went on the table, why well, I'm calling the table, I went on the bed, lay down and you know, she squeezed a little gel thing for your belly and she rub rub and search round and then she's like, um, well, there is a heartbeat 
and a little black vacuum. So if you know how, if you're pregnant before and you, um you do a first ultrasound at two weeks pregnant, you know that you don't actually see a physical baby, you see like a little circle something. Ooh, yeah, more space with a little growing up. So I saw that space and then she do this Doppler thing and you hear the art beat, boop, 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 boop. And then my heart start go boop, 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 guys, what is going on here? What is going on here? What is going on here? Me not understand what's going on. At the time though, for some reason, I'm never nervous, never feel like home and So anytime I get a pregnancy scare, my first thing is, ooh, not a big day. But then I just never feel nervous, I never feel scared. It was just like it's calm, like you know, she's supposed to be there. So I was like, alright, cool, I'm smile. When I hear the Abby, I'm smile. I'm like, alright, cool. And then immediately I reach home. I tell such person and I start to feel baby clothes because someone knows me did. You know, me never feel no way. I start to put girl clothes on because me the content to make up about that time. If me did ever get a son, mm, Lord of Jesus, I'm going to paint and drop down collapse. Oh, me didn't know me got about that. So yeah, I start to girl clothes and you know, that was the beginning. The first time I started my pregnancy was Horrible. I must say horrible mean horrible. Every day I vomit non-stop. Belly kill me, minty, salad and soup was my best friend. Because that's the only thing I could keep down. Minty, salad and soup. If I smell onion or anything I cut up, my head start hurt me. The scent of everything bothered me. My baby father loves air freshener. Them of them plug in air freshener there, when plug in everything. That bothered me. And the man would not stop plug them in. And that would have killed me. They don't have to walk and plug them up and dash them away. I'm not up on that. Right? So that was the first part. I had this thing called hypermesis gravidarium, which is a severe form of morning sickness. So every day I had to go to the doctor, or most days, because I never go every day. Most days in my first trimester, to go to the doctor for him to give me an injection or two. I think one of the injections is gravel and this other one, as I remember. And I had to take those with pills to kind of keep down the, you know, the nausea and the vomiting, etc. So that's in the first trimester. That's what I went through in the first trimester. That sickness kind of make you feel lazy, droopy. You feel so sick. You don't even want to see yourself. You don't want to fix up yourself and go away. It's just not it, right? Second trimester now. Remember, says I run through me. I go. I go no full pregnancy journey. I run through. Second trimester now was uh, much better. When I was about five months, six months pregnant, I feel much better than myself. I could start taking back two pictures, look cute, go up on the road. The morning sickness wasn't as bad as before. Like probably probably one time a day or less or a couple times a week, but not as bad as before. And I was grateful for that because then I could start eating some stuff, you know, like. I don't remember what I could eat, but I could eat some stuff now, some food. That makes sense. We go to the restaurants and actually enjoy the meal. I don't feel too bad. So my second trimester was my best trimester. Honestly. The only part of it I didn't like was the fact that my belly started growing. And my belly wasn't big. So it's like the baby growing inside of me. And she had punch in my organs. So each time the baby would move or kick, I feel like my ribs are kick out. My lungs are squeezed up. Like, my belly was so small. I'll try to insert a couple pictures so they can see, but my belly did small. Small to me feel like I could have breathed. Small. Right? So that was basically my second trimester. Oh, second trimester is where if I found out my the gender. And I was supposed to do a gender reveal. However, I never do the gender reveal I'm supposed to do. But, yeah, my final summer that I was a girl. Final summer baby was a girl. Yeah. Third trimester now was where all the shit hit the fan. Third trimester, I get really sick. Sick to the point where I thought I had um, COVID at one point. I get all of the COVID symptoms, all of the flu symptoms, plus scratching. I would itch every part of my body would that itch me. But I, I need help to scratch. I could wake up people out of them bed for coming help me scratch. No, that man tell me I scratch for that. Mm-mm. If I wake up people tell them bed to come help me scratch. 
we could have sleep to all my scratch, right? So I decided at first I thought I had flu or something plus chicken box, right? So I start use calamine lotion, buy a flu medication, put onion on my socks and everything, then nothing would work. So I decided, all right, I'm gonna go to the doctor. When I went to the doctor, no, I Google first. You know that when I go on Google. I go on Google and Google say, in pregnancy, the only condition that you can get that makes you itch like that is a condition called cholestasis of pregnancy. Right? When I Google it and it show me the symptoms, I say, all right, every single symptom that I saw me here of, match back to what I experience. However, Google say I must have 2% or 4% of people in pregnancy get this condition. Right? So I must have 2% or 4%. I say, I'm a cool so bad looking. Why me? Of all the people them would have want itch up in another two to four percent. They tell me no. So I said so done. Bad looking at itch up in the two to four percent. Yeah. Alright. When I went to the doctor, they do a blood test. In order to know if you have the condition, they do a blood test. So with this blood test, it tests um your liver function or your liver enzymes, etc. So every test that they performed on me, my results then come back up as well. Sky high. So the normal is here, my name come back up as well. Aye, aye. Which in, I should have known because um, when I got that condition, I started vomiting a lot. Each time I vomit, I vomit up some green, fratty, bitter, something, which is bile. Because your liver produce bile or your goblet or whatever, whatever I go. Yeah, so I'm keep on vomiting up bile and should I know some liver not work good. So, yeah, in pregnancy, you can get a condition. That causes your liver to malfunction and I had that problem. You know, I had that problem. So how do they fix this? This condition can cause their cause your daughter or your child or your son to be born, still born, right? And that's a problem because you don't want your pity born and pity dead. So when me learned that now, I was like, what? I did nervous. But no say my baby can born and still born. Nervous, 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 nervous. Bad, 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 bad. So what I did was I, my doctor gave me some prescription to take and I took him. Then she tell me to monitor the baby. If you feel the baby start move less or whatever, then you have to go to the hospital. So one day I was home and my daughter didn't move none at all for the day. Like normally she didn't move, you know, probably about three times for the day. If not kind of rapid. She don't move down at all for that day. So I start getting nervous and I say, all right, I'm going to watch her for the next day. Next day, same thing. None at all. Normally, when I lay down for sleep, be able to just start keeping so bop, 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 bop. I lay down for sleep, nothing. I try to eat only for something, nothing. I try to do everything what I normally do. And she move, nothing. So I say, all right. I'm going to call my doctor. I'm going to call my doctor and tell her. She said, all right, go to you right now. Bring your bags and your something. Check yourself in. Yeah, I'm speaking to the first thing is, uh, okay. All morning, you know, I'm admitted it's after 11 in the night, and I've been here from after 11 in the morning, so basically 12 hours so far. Um, I don't even know if it's telling me right now. I get injection till a week, then I get blood till a week. Like if you look at my leg, it's it's stay. Look at my leg here and my arm there. Can see where you know that your blood and stuff, and then they also give me an injection around here on my hand. <coughs> and the ones on my leg, um, they say it's too. Help the baby lungs because I'm currently 30 weeks and six days, 31 weeks tomorrow. Well, in 30 minutes. Um, yeah, currently 31 weeks. And they might have to, you know, take her out early by either C section or inducing labor because I've been diagnosed with this thing called. Called ICP, so it's intrahepatic some cholestasis of pregnancy. Is this thing that affects your liver and bile production? 
Oh. Um, I'm sitting here. I hate this chair. I just want to go home so bad. I haven't eaten all day. I'm waiting on my mom to bring some food. And my boyfriend to bring me some snacks and juice and stuff. Yeah, I'm just here. Jesus Christ! You feel nervous? On social media. Yes, of course. Good man. Ah, it's not burn. The joke, not I tell just the. Exactly. I think it's the alcohol. I'm <laughs> extra. <laughs> Machine <laughs> mask, man. I should be fine. light, that one, Nella. Let me give it to you, friend. Yeah, now I'm feeling good. I'm going to trust you. It's going to switch it. It's going to be actually a good day. Be right, bro. That went. I went to UA and check myself in. Initially, I was supposed to have baby at Andrews, but at this time, I was about seven months pregnant, and my doctor was explaining to me that Andrews can facilitate premature baby, like how UA could, because they don't have a NICU. Yeah, they don't have an NICU. NICU. So, um, yeah, I went to UA, I checked myself in, and they run back the test, and my liver function was this high. My upper right quadrant area right or so would have killed me. So they did a test um, to see why it was hurting and da 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 Oh yeah, it was my liver that was malfunctioning, causing it to hurt, as well as the baby kept kicking me up underneath my ribs, right? So did all that. I stayed in hospital for a few weeks, probably a month or two. And yeah, they did that because they wanted to monitor the baby. In that period of time, I had a lot of, we call it a C-section scare, where the baby would stop moving, heart rate would stop, and they might have to rush you, say they're going to do C-section, or they're going to do an ultrasound to see if the baby all right. Then they say the baby not all right. They say the baby not moving at next hour. They might have to put it on the, put it on the table, put it out to cut the baby. All them something that was scare me, because I was like seven months, eight months pregnant, the baby not ready to come out yet. They want to say if the baby come out now, the baby lungs don't develop fully yet, so you're gonna to have to um buy this thing. I don't remember what it is that coats the baby's lungs and protect the lungs and helps it develop lungs faster. And I was just stressed. As when I think what the fuck they have to go spend much money for NICU, spend much money for buy them something for the baby lungs and stress. Stress all around the block. And the fact say baby can die. Right? Stress. So, had also a pregnancy scare, stayed in hospital for a while until they started giving me um this steroid. I don't remember what name. Sorry, D. I don't remember what name. But they started giving me this steroid that develops the baby lungs faster just in case um the baby should burn any minute now or in case something should go wrong and they have to cut it and take out the baby. So yeah, I was in the hospital for a while. Um getting about seven injections a day, rough. All of my bodies get black and blue injection sites because apart from the injections to keep the baby well, you have to take blood thinners. Mm? Yeah. And then you can really walk out of the hospital ward and you just feel like prison. I felt like I was in prison for a minute. Yeah. I spent my birthday in the hospital. Yeah. So, you know, after that, you know, um, I got checked out like, a week or two before I gave birth. In this two week span that I got checked out, I decided to, all right, I'm gonna just keep a baby shower, do a photo shoot, and do everything just in case. Take the picture August 19th, post it August 20th, do the baby shower August 21st. Yes, that is it. And then my daughter was born on August 20th. <laughs>
the labor and delivery. I was at home feeling well. Not um, never feeling no contractions, not at all. But today was my say today, Wednesday. It was Wednesday, August, uh, I think, 24th. Wednesday, August 24th was my appointment. Because I'm appointments every week on a Wednesday. Normal doctor check up. I go in, doctor check, do a little ultrasound. Tell us, all right, the baby's growing well. She weigh X amount. No. Anytime soon, baby going to come. Make sure you prepare yourself. Pack your bags. Make sure you have this, that, 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 that in your bag. If you should feel any contractions, this is just like a prep to tell you, you know, what you should expect. If you feel any contractions and they're five minutes apart or less, they're coming in strong. Um, Yeah, don't remember everything. So five minutes apart, coming in rapid, you feel pain in your back, etc. You should go to the hospital. That's a sign that you're contracting and the baby's coming, right? I wasn't having any of that. So my doctor decided, all right, um, I don't know. But let me just check to see how far up the baby head is. Because the normal do a thing where they put their finger up and they can tell you how far the baby head is or if you start contract um, dilating. So I never expect that my doctor would tell me that I started dilating. I thought she was going to tell me, say, oh, baby, the right is so, so come down. Because normally when she do it, she just say, oh, your cervix feels soft. Like two weeks before she did it. She was like, oh, your cervix feels soft, so baby going to come anytime soon, probably the next three weeks or four weeks or so. Yes, yeah, so she did like a two-finger thing and she went in and she was like, oh. I was like, what? She's like, I can feel the head. I'm like, you can feel the head? She's like, yeah, I can feel the head. Um, the baby going to come anytime soon, probably about Friday. This was Wednesday. She's like, baby going to come anytime soon, probably around Friday. I was like, okay. She's like, all right, um, I'm going to book you in for Friday. So go home, pack your bags and whatever, and be at the hospital on Friday. I was like, all right, no problem, because today is Wednesday. I made a plan for go to my hair today, which was the Wednesday. So I was like, all right, no problem. I'm going to up on something for my pregnancy. I'm going to do my ear, braid up my ear. So in that postpartum, you know, part of the life, more than feel ugly and stressed out. And at least I hear that do. I have a new baby, but I hear that do. While I'm sitting and talking to my doctor and whatever, and I put on my clothes, and where she was around her table and I was sitting there, she was like, um, on second thought, do you have any plans for the day? And I was like, for today? And she said, yeah. I was like, yeah, I have plans for today. And she's like, what are your plans? And I'm like, well, I'm actually going to do my hair now. I'm going to get my hair braided. She's like, oh, call and cancel. And I'm like, call and cancel? She's like, yeah, call and cancel. Mm, go home. This is all you have to do. Go home, take up your bags, and head up to the hospital. And she's like, what the fuck? Don't even go home. When you leave here, head straight to the hospital. Call your spouse and tell him, say, to bring your bag then. I was like, no, nah, but my bag not done, fuck. I have to go and go pop my bag now. She's like, you're serious? And I'm like, yeah, i serious. So she's like, all right, don't take long. You have to be at the hospital before four. For them to add to. So go home, get your bag quick, don't make no other stuff, and get your ass up to the hospital. I was like, all right, fine. So I went home, I packed my bags, and I made a stop, even though she told me not to. And I went up to the hospital. Hello. Hello. Oh my God. So good and good I know, it got hurt me. That's good at learning. Oh my God. When I went up to the hospital, they put me in and they were like, all right, so your doctor said we should induce you. So since it's too late now, uh, we don't want to induce you tonight, we're going to induce you tomorrow morning. So they put me in. And we sleep on something, wake up the next morning, and yeah. So I woke up the next morning, they checked my cervix. So a doctor came in at about 10 something. She walked me through, she came in some student doctors, and she was like, um, If I mind if they come in, I was like, No, they can come in. She's like, Okay, she's going to teach them um, some stuff. So she's going to use my, you know, to teach them. I was like, Okay, fine. 
they came in and they were like, um, you know what you're doing today? And I'm like, yeah, and what I'm doing? She's like, what are you doing? So I said, induction. She's like, yeah, you understand what the process is? And I said, yeah, I understand. And she asked me what it is, I told her what it is, and she kind of explained some more. So she's like, basically, what we're going to do is put half of a pill inside the kukuhu, and that's going to cause the contractions to come on and the baby to come down since you're not yet 40 weeks. Because at this time, I was 37 weeks and a day. I was like, okay. She's like, the risk of it though, induction can bring on a risk. The risk is that you can die, the baby can die. But that is something that you have to tell every patient. So she come and she's like, because we tell you this and you know and you're aware, we're going to give you a, a, a waiver to sign just in case anything should happen or you're not liable. I was like, so basically I'm not going to say. Because I set up myself, for me, I'm a penny candidate, I'm unresponsible. I'm going to just take it and sign because I had to. Anyways, before she put the ship break the pill already, and she was like, all right, it's about after 11 now. She break the pill in half, and she's like, all right, you know, open up your foot and whatever, so she can't put in the pill, and she's like, all right, wait. Before you insert the pill, I have to check if you start dilating, even though I don't think you are. I was like, okay, routine check. So she do a routine check, she come back with the two finger, I mean, this is not something I mean, yet, so, then routine check. She come back with her two finger and she's like, oh, and then she have a look at her face too. And I was like, oh, she's like, um, she do something like this. And she's like, you're 45 centimeters dilated already. So I can't induce you. I'm like, huh? She's like, yeah, you start dilating, I feel no pain. So I'm say, yeah, I feel a little bit of contraction, but them no, right, that crazy. They just feel normal to me, like, no, look at normal cramps. She's like, well, um, I'm going to send you over to labor and delivery now, labor and delivery ward for them to, you know, Check it in, put it on the bed or whatever, so they can leave over there because your baby going to come today. If not today, by tomorrow morning. I was like, okay, all right, cool. So, then go for a wheelchair because that's how they, 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 they move around. You're going to be in a wheelchair. So, if you feel like wheelchair, you have people alone around. Yeah? So, then put it in a wheelchair and then we they go over to labor and delivery. That word there. Hey guys, so. No matter. It seems to be not very close, but I'm going to have to make your note. So I was supposed to be induced today, however, um, when they were going to start the induction process and they checked me, I was already five centimeters dilated. So I'm can the induction. I am currently 37 weeks plus one. Oh, and and the labor word to labor until I'm ready to deliver. So I'm going to see if I can try and video as much as possible to show you guys. So over at labor and delivery now, um, they introduced me to four nurses. They gave me four nurses, four nurses, me one, four nurses. So they gave me four nurses and I was like, all right, this one is the one that's going to do X. This one is the one that's going to monitor the drip. This one is the one that's going to check you to see if how far you are in the diet, you know, whatever. And this one is the one you take call when you need nothing. And I was like, all right. Tom, Dick, Ariane, sorry. Four of them. Um, my doctor came in. So I had a private doctor, a private midwife, which is my doctor that I told me to go up to you. She came in and she's like, hi, Tristan. And I'm like, hi. She's like, you ready? And I'm like, who would be ready? Imagine, this is my puchuchu. I smell the big light, me I go home. Food already. For all of that. Eh, ain't already in this one. So she's like, well, um, I'm going to check you. She come back with her two finger, check again. When she checked me, she's like, all right, you're five centimeters. However, your water don't burst. So I'm going to burst it for you. That will speed up the labor. Something I didn't know. When they break your water, labor start come faster. So she come in with one hook. She use one, what do you call that something? I don't know, none of them something name. She use one thing to open up your, yeah? She take one hook, hook it to the, the sack that the baby's in, that's the amniotic sack, and she pop it. And she pop it, and the water gush out. Like, I kid you not, immediately, like a couple seconds after, pain start whopping. When I say pain start whopping, pain start whopping me. Aside from the pain of whopping me now, the lady tell the nurse to put some oxytocin in the drip. If you know oxytocin, oxytocin is a, is a hormone or a natural hormone, I think, that your body produces when you're 
having a baby when you're delivering to speed up the labor. So this is a synthetic form, I believe. Oxytocin, pitocin, whatever. They inject it in the drip and trust me, when I tell you said PN start, what me? You know what I mean? Yeah, best believe the PN start what me. So I'm going to insert, insert a few clips for you to see what's happened. But yeah, pain start what me. After that, um, what happened after that? So I was in there. My child's dad was in there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember much. Because honestly, after she, she break my water, pain started me. So me feel like, remember now, I felt like I wanted um epidural. Yes, yeah, something I need people for know. I did not know that in Jamaica, you have a request say you want epidural from months in advance. So like the moment you know you're pregnant in your first trimester there about, you have a request say you want epidural and pay for it in advance. I did not know that. So when the pain start, clap me in and me click in. And I asked for it. I was told that I can't get it because I have to request it from before and they don't have any day that, that's for me. Da, 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 da. I was like, what? So I had to have a natural, raw, and real labor experience. Like natural, raw, and real. I mean, there's a raw and real, raw and real. So the pain start what me. My baby that was there videoing and stuff. Trust me. It's called money. This man we not pain and she can't tell about her YouTube same way. You know? She's like, I don't want pain, but they can't bear me see me. All I tell me, how for it, put it sideways. <laughs> hey, it's so wrong with you, you know? Mm -hmm. Are you that woman? Yeah. 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 You're not much pain for wave. Huh? You're not much pain for wave. Oh God. Yes. Where have I set your fans? Did me? No, oh, man. I passed out a couple times well in between like I was there pain I connect me and I keep on a pass out like all I can remember is keep on knocking out and then a contraction that slapped me I'm gonna wake up back pain again I'm gonna knock out again then a contraction and the next one that slapped me I'm gonna wake up back I kept passing out multiple times in between until at one point I wake up I'm just Just feel like my bathroom. Like, where's my eyes bathroom? I was like, nurse, I feel like my bathroom. And she's like, no, men is in your bathroom. I'm like, yeah, I feel like my eyes bathroom. And she's like, what do you want to do? I said, I feel like my, but I feel like my people too. And she's like, well, they can't get up off of the bed. If you want people, you have to send for a bedpan. I said, I'm going to be a bedpan. And then 
couple minutes after that, I just still feel like I'm in the bathroom. So I want to see the bathroom, the nurse and mechanic in the bathroom. Instead, I should come check me, you know. She said, I'm in the bathroom. Some of them lay down, lay down, lay down until pain just has slapped me. My contractions were mainly in my back. You understand? So they had the monitor strapped to my belly and they're trying to check for the contractions or whatever. The nurse come and she's like, I don't think you're contracting. I don't think you're um, ready to have the baby yet because we're looking at the monitor and you're not contracting. There's no contractions going on. And I'm like, I'm feeling a contraction right now. She's like, you're feeling a contraction right now and there's none on the monitor. So another nurse come and she press her hand on my tummy and she's like, well, she definitely contracting because I can feel it. There's um, tightening. Yeah. So she's like, um, you're definitely contracting because I can feel it. There's tightening. And she's like, so how it not showing on the other one was like, so how it not showing on the monitor? And she's like, well, remember she say I'm back a killer right now, so I'm having back contractions, right? So my doctor had come in and tell him, so all right, when I reach several centimeters dilated to call her so she can come, transfer me from the labor and delivery ward to the, the delivery room, and, you know, put on her gloves and so on. So they left for like the next 30 minutes and... I kid you not, I felt my back opening up. I'm going to feel something come down through me, right? So I was like, nurse, I feel like more is the bathroom. Because to me, it just feel like you wash. So I was like, nurse, more is the bathroom. She's like, no, you know why is the bathroom and the baby that's a come down. I was like, all right, um, I feel like the baby has come now. She's like, no, the baby not come now. I'll just check you, you know, dilated so far. And, you know, your contractions aren't that high and whatever. I said, nurse, we feel like the baby has come down. So another one, the nurse and me are talking to not, not pay me no mind. So the next nurse come and she's like, all right, remember check if you see how far you reach out ever. And she go, and she's like, all right, she's 10 centimeters, the baby has come because she can feel the baby head. Yeah. So from there, I remember, I don't remember much, but I think it was 4.50 something. 4.50 something p.m. And she decided to, all right, she have to send for one stretcher. She sent for the stretcher, the stretcher come. She tried to move me from the stretcher to the from the bed to the stretcher. However, I feel like I'm really ready for push. So I'm start push and she's like, no, 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 don't push. You can't push. If you push, the baby will come out right or so. You can't have the baby right so don't push. So she locked my foot and then I have to try to roll in the baby. She says, if you feel a contraction, I have to try to roll it. Don't push. No matter what, don't push. So I said, alright. At the time, my child dad was in the room. So I think they went and they called him, they put on him scrubs, they know them. Cover your hair, tie your scrubs, and blah, 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 right? So, yeah. So, this was for 50 something, as I said. If I want to switch on them and lock my foot, I'm going to tell you something like I want to push, but I can't push because she's lucky, right? Um, They brought me into the delivery room, which, by the way, is really nice. I never expected it to look that good. Like, it looks really good. The one at you in, look good. So, they brought me into the delivery room and then transfer me on the bed. Take me up on the switch and put bed. The moment I hit the bed, you know, I could no longer, because then put your foot open up on uh, two silver something on the, the top of the bed. Then open you up and put your foot in on them too. So this is the moment they're going to start opening me up. Me could not hold in the baby no more. I'm going to and take one. I vividly remember while me decided to mega push, my doctor was putting on her gloves. She's like, no. I was like, that's not going to push. The doctor said, no, don't push. Wait for me to tell you when to push. And I said, that my body at time for push. I'm going to push. She's like, no, don't push. Putting on my gloves, don't push. And I said, that my can't wait. She said, all right, push. So I make one big push. I'm going to say, my daughter ain't go. Whoop. No. While I make the big push, there's this silver thing in the roof. Like I can see it. It's like a reflector or whatever. So I was looking up. And I remember I watched a lot of YouTube videos while I was pregnant. And I remember them say. Tuck your chin in your chest and push like your arch. So I'm going to do exactly that. And in another time, the baby head goes up. Oops, I fly out. And Doc said, all right, wait. I'm going to tell you when to push next. I'm going to say that I can't wait. One more big push me I give. I'm going to one more big push. Even though she's for wait, never listen. I'm going one more big push and the baby just fly out and she catch her. That big push there caused me a whole heap of problem. I tear. Bad, bad, bad too. Okay. Okay. So I tore from my booty. Booty fold. That was a bad tear. So I got a third degree tear, right? 
second, third, second to third, almost second, third. In between that's so, a third degree tear, which was very, very painful. So I'm gonna take like two minutes to show my daughter because I went in the room like 4 58 and the baby born five o'clock on the dot. So she was born at 5 p.m. on the dot. And them take like about 40 minutes to stitch me up. No, it didn't take a while, about 40 minutes to an hour to stitch me up. At that time, them take the baby, in, bring the baby in um, another room, bathe them off, you know, clean off, look white something with them born with, bathe them off. Fix them up and bring them back home here. So I got my mother um probably an hour after I have her. So them them alright. So when the baby come out, them take the baby, then put the baby on you while them cut the string or I don't even know who cut it. I don't know if my baby father cut it or the doctor cut it. I think the doctor took cut it. Because he was right beside me. Do you remember that period? He was right beside me, so my doctor ended up cutting it. She never asked him to cut it, she just cut it with a rude lady. But anyways, she cut it and um he was there with his camera so like, <laughs> and i remember the nurse said no no you can't take a picture whatever, whatever. and he was like well don't take them already so what gives right what gives so he took the picture and yeah i don't know what happened after that i remember just being stitched up um i wasn't feeling much pain while i was being stitched up my daughter was on top of me um my doctor numbed me which was good she numbed me while the cut was still fresh, so I was already feeling the pain from the cut. So I never feel when she injects you know me, and I never feel when she sew me up. I just you no know, say she do it, and I was fine. But what normal after they bring me in back into the labor and delivery room, um, and yeah, that was basically it, <laughs> guys. That was it. So it's still August twenty fifth, and. Mm -hmm. So it's still August 25th and boom, boom. This was here. So. Mm -hmm. Baby girl made her way into the world at 5 o'clock on the dot light, guys. The labor was hard. The contractions were very hard. Painful. I legit felt like I just wanted to, you know? Give in, I was like, oh my god, can't do this, this hot water. So, you know, them take the baby, them tell say, all right, a nurse come, them tell say, all right, you have to go feed the baby, and then tell her how to do it, what to do with the nipple, if your nipple, nah, you know, stand up or whatever. Them tell her what to do, and I did just that, I did it fine, perfect actually. And everything was good from there, you know, right there, your new mom. One thing though, you know that feeling that people get when they just have a baby. You know, you watch them video and people them are cry. Oh my god, it's so much. Me never, me never feel none of that. Like me not gonna tell no lie. Me never have no real emotions when my daughter come out. Like to me, I was in so much pain. Can't wait to push her out. I did not have that real raw feeling. Me just want to get out and get it over with, for real. And I remember the first time seeing her, I was like, all right, come give me a baby. But there was no real, ah, oh, my love her, none of that. Never experienced that. So if you don't experience that, it's totally fine. Don't think you're weird or not everybody will experience it. I experienced the love. Not even the full love, but reality kind of lit me. I'm a feel, you know, I look a feeling there the next day or later on the night when, you know, everybody gone and, and you alone and the baby, I have to feed the baby, you know, hold the baby. I was like, all right, feel it now, you know, feel it now. Still, I never experienced that. I don't know how people do it. They call it like, oh, I'm the reason you, you're the reason I'm here and I live and bitch, you've been living before the child was born. What you mean? I never experienced that, so I never understand it. Until now. No, I do. I do now. But I never understand it like when the baby just born. Like, like what? Never understand that. So, yeah, that's basically it. All right, yeah, so I can go to like a post delivery. Um, <laughs> because one just went up, and we're getting discharged today. It's pumpkin. We're getting discharged. So 
so after delivery, um, I think I was fine. As I'm telling you, the cut never that hurt me. But it alright for managing my daughter while I was in the hospital. When you're in the hospital, they don't release you until the baby passed stool and urine. You pass stool and urine. But as I'm telling you, my tear, and my tear goes straight down to me. Ooh, so I never want to pass no stool. So I'm kind of beg the nurse to let me out. I promise. If I don't do it when I reach home, I'll call on it for him. Which in, I didn't. When I reach home, I still couldn't do it for like a couple of days. So I call, tell them, and my doctor prescribed metamucil, which is a fiber for me. It actually helped on any day. The healing process. So after the stitches, like a week after, I don't even think it was a full week. Like three days after my reach home. So that's like five days after me have baby. I just remember I can't walk, I couldn't walk properly. Like the stitches started to hurt. Why? My doctor saw me and it was fine, but then I started to swell. So the stitch started to get tight. Imagine you saw something, you saw a piece of your skin and it's fine. But then that air got irritated and it started to swell. So the stitches get tight. And I feel like my front I bust out. I couldn't walk, nothing care about my front. I feel walk. So I need help to sit down. I can't get up. Like I remember just being in intense pain. So I had to go to the doctor, they had to recut. They had to cut back some stitches. re -sew me. That was very painful. That I felt. The re -sew and the cut and I felt that. So I went back to the doctor, they inject me in my chuchi chi. It was very painful. They re -sew me, very hot. And they have to do the sits bath. The sits bath, never love it. You have to do that every day, twice a day. Or if you use the bathroom, every time you use the bathroom, you can do it. Never love it. Um, one time I decided to do it in the bathtub or the jacuzzi or whatever, and that was the worst mistake ever. Don't do that. If them say, if you do the six baths now and pan, do it at the pan. Don't knock up and fold up your tub and go in there because that can't forget what infection. So, what happened was because I fold the bath pan and did the six baths in there with my foot and everything, so you enter your body, your foot in there, your foot and your coochie, you know, mix and the six baths, you understand? So, the stitches start getting infected. So I had to go back to the doctor for them to prescribe something for me to take. Fix the stitches again. Trust me, it was a whirlwind. My stitches never end up healed until my daughter was about seven months, six months, seven months, there about. So, you know, nobody even could do nothing. I don't know. I'm never not one pregnant either. Probably I tried once. Try hard. You know what the bad part? I can't forget. You know, I'm not going to forget the part here. My Africa doctor, once every week, from my daughter was about a month old, up until she was about six and a half months old, to get injection in my front. You know why? When I was having baby, my tear nerve. Like, when my tear, my tear one nerve. So if you know what I pinch nerve, I end up with a pinch nerve in my front. Which means it was it's just very painful. I can't lock my leg fully. If my panty rub, panty it, it hurt. Everything but it was painful. So I had to go to get a series of injection to kill the nerve. Or to weaken the nerve. Yeah. And that never finished till I was about seven months pregnant. So for me, my pregnancy journey was a little bit traumatic. The pregnancy journey itself was traumatic. And the labor and delivery experience, again, was traumatic. Like, the pain was on an all-time high. Yeah. If you have a blackout every time you feel the pain, you pain high. So the, the level of how painful my contractions were, I kept knocking, blocking out, blocking out, blocking out, coming back, blocking out. In high. You understand? Yeah, so. If you ask me if I have a next one, probably have a next one. Just one more. Just because I want a next one. So one more. Probably a boy. Just one more. Yeah. But if it was up to the experience, I would have more. She would have a sweet. That's it. So yeah, that's basically my story slash, you know, experience. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know if you like this video. And you know, if there's anything else you guys want to know or I should do a video on, just let me know. Thanks for watching.